Can you believe that over 2 million Christmas ornaments are sold each year? As a sublimation creator, this is the quickest way to grow your business, especially around the holiday season. So I'm going to walk you through the entire process so that you can master ceramic ornaments. You're going to need a couple items. Of course, your ceramic blanks, heat transfer tape, a roller, and our mittens so we don't burn our hands. The only large item you will need is a heat press, and I never recommend using a handheld press. A closed down or an automatic press is going to work best because of the pressure. I personally work with a TransPro 15 by 15. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we need to touch on the actual ornament itself. Remember, our projects are only going to be as good as the blank that we are using. So make sure that you are using credible suppliers. I purchased mine through PYD Life. I love them and I never have any issue with inconsistent coating. Some ornaments will come with a red string or a gold string, or you can even add your own for a custom touch. Being that these are ceramic, they're a bit thicker and feel very durable. So these are going to last for years to come. They measure around 2.75 by 2.75. And I purchased these in a pack of 25 for around $33, breaking down to about $1.33 per item. Please feel free to do research on any other suppliers. However, if you are interested in checking out PYD Life, I will have these listed in the description below. Additionally, you can purchase from their website or I actually take advantage of their Amazon site. That way I get the free prime shipping. All right, so let's jump into the actual creation. I always recommend by starting with a double check on the measurements. Most places are going to let you know the sizing. However, when it comes to us creating templates, it's very important to be as accurate as possible. Another thing I love about PYD Life, and this is just all of their blanks, they include these cards with time and temperature settings, so it makes the process extra easy. Designs can be applied in a few different methods. The first method is by taking a PNG or an image and placing it on the center of the ornament. You do need to keep in mind that it should be less than 2.75 inches to accurately fit, and you want it to be below that hole in the center where the string goes because if anything gets pressed onto that, of course, it's not going to show up. This next method is my personal favorite because you can take customized photos or even patterns and cover the entire surface of the ornament. Now keep in mind, these templates should be larger than the ornament itself. That way it covers all bases, all sides, and you don't have to worry about any white edges at the end of your project. Please keep in mind when you are printing sublimation designs, we should always be using customized print settings. That way we get the most accurate color depiction and the best saturation. Now it is time to apply our design to our ornament. And this is actually super easy. The best thing I can recommend for you is just take your time and double check everything. Of course, once these are pressed, they are permanent, so there's no turning back. Okay, this may be the most important thing I say the entire video, so turn that volume up if you need to. When it comes to applying anything to any blank that is going into heat, make sure that we are only ever using heat transfer tape. If you use scotch tape or a plastic-based tape that is not rated for heat settings, it is going to create a huge headache for you, melting to your heat press and even your blank, and you're just, you're going to regret it. Believe me, the only way that I know that is because I've done it more times than I would even like to admit. I get my heat transfer tape from Amazon. I think they come in about six rolls at a time, and they're super cheap. They're under $10. They last me quite a while, so it's not a huge side investment by any means. When it comes to applying your designs, you don't have to use the method that I'm using. If you find something that works best for you, please feel free to do that. I think a lot of us get so in our head about we have to be following the instructions to a T. But hey, if you find something that works better for you, please take advantage, but also leave it in the comments down below so it makes my life easier too. Okay, for this method, do you see what I mean now about making sure that we have some borders there? That is so important to ensure that the edges do not turn white. So I like to apply this design in the complete opposite way that I did for method one. That way I can ensure that everything is centered. Now with these designs, because they are covering the entire blank, you need to ensure that everything is super secure and not moving around. If there is room for this design to move around, it can cause ghosting and ruin your entire project. This is not directed towards anybody, but mainly myself in the beginning because somebody needed to tell me. Stop worrying about saving money on tape. It is not expensive to even worry about. Just make sure that you are using enough tape so that you don't ruin your design. If you ruin the blank, that is the expensive part. So use five, six, seven, use the entire roll if that's what it takes. Anyways, because of this tutorial, and I'm really going into detail here, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, this is going to take me half the afternoon. 
I promise this process probably only takes about five minutes. So during that time period, I like to take full advantage and have my heat press warming up. Now, manufacturer recommends 360 degrees for 250 seconds. And instantly, your light probably went off thinking, "Uh uh-uh, for sublimation, we need it about 400 degrees. And for some items, you're not wrong. However, when it comes to ceramics, we always want to lower the temperature and have it under the heat longer. This is really going to infuse all of those colors and all of those minute details. And before I confuse anybody, my press is a little finicky. And as you get to know your press, you'll realize they all have their quirks. Mine fluctuates about four degrees, which is why I set mine two degrees higher. That way it averages right around that perfect 360 mark. When our machine is completely up to temperature, it is time to press. And please don't do this early because that is going to make a big difference. Just be patient. It will get to 360 before you know it. Now, this is the second most important part of the entire thing. You need to protect your heating element and the base of your press. See, Sublimation Ink loves to transfer onto everything. So I apply copy paper. You could use butcher paper, cardstock, literally whatever you would like. That way, it protects all sections of your press. If you get ghosting on your mat or your heating element, it will transfer onto other projects and cause a huge headache. Earlier when we were applying our designs, we did that in two different ways. However, when you are pressing, they both need to be pressed in the same direction. And that is with the sublimation paper facing the heating element. See, as we know, sublimation only transfers when it comes to heat and pressure. So if one of these were flipped over, there's actually no pressure and not enough heat getting into the actual ink. So no transfer is going to happen. And if it does, it's going to be very light and faded. So ensure that your sublimation paper is always facing your heating element. Now don't get crazy and just close down this press. You need to protect your heating element. So add another piece of copy paper or butcher paper or whatever works best for you. And now you are ready to press. If you're using an automatic press, this next step will not apply to you because your press is smart enough to know the pressure settings already. However, for me, my press is a manual pressure settings. And I think before this, I was using a t-shirt, which is high pressure. So I needed to adjust this to medium or I would smash these into a million pieces. So if you have a manual press, just remember medium is about center. Manufacturer recommends 250 seconds, which is right around four minutes. When you pull these out, make sure that you take this paper and do not apply this to any other sublimation project because if you can see there, there's a little bit of ink that has transferred, which will in turn transfer onto a different project. I cut those up and use them for scrap paper. You can do whatever you would like with them. And from one creator to another, I know that these mitts are not the cutest things, but please wear them because the first time you grab a hold of these puppies with bare hands, instant regret. I thought I removed all of my fingerprints, so please keep that in mind. There is no right or wrong way to remove the sublimation paper, but do not go in there with a pick because you will scratch the ceramic and it is pretty noticeable. These customized ornaments fly off the shelves every year. And I know you're thinking, well, there's a lot of other creators that make them. I promise you, you're still going to get sales, whether that's on Etsy or local sales or even your Facebook page. People absolutely fall in love with these and you can get them for pretty much anything and anybody. I am aware that I'm sounding very biased towards the custom photo ornaments, but I will say that the other ornaments fly off the shelves just as quickly. You can add any type of PNG, a character, really the opportunities are endless, but I'm going to give you a secret to drive your profit margin even higher. Customization is a huge seller when it comes to ornaments or literally any gift option actually. So here's what I'm going to tell you. These ornaments are double-sided. So although there's not customization on the front, I do give them the option with a bit of an upcharge to add customization on the back. And that can include anything with their name, the Christmas year, a funny little saying, but I would limit the characters. That way you can ensure that everything's going to, you know, fit on the back of it. Once these are pressed, you do want to make sure to give them a good wipe down. That way nothing's kind of sticking around. There's no dust on them. And you will see the detail on these is insane. Honestly, imagine opening this on Christmas morning. I think you would just be blown away especially if it's, you know, some momentum or the best thing that's happened to you all year. You open it up and now you have a forever memory. And the other ones are perfect for kids. I know in my household, we had a favorite ornament every year. We picked it out. We got our name on it. And then by the time I was like 21 years old, I got a box of ornaments for 21 years worth and I can put them on my own tree. I think that's one of my favorite traditions. And imagine you are giving that to families. 
I think that's actually the benefit of all of this. Just like that, you've made it to the finish line and you have all of the knowledge to absolutely crush the ornament game this holiday season. Plus, I hope I've given you the confidence boost that we all need, especially when we're beginning. By the way, my name is Kaylee and I cover topics like sublimation and DTF prints and I give you all of the knowledge so that you can succeed in this space and miss out all of the trial and error process like I did over the past four years. If you have any additional questions, please leave them down below and check out that description box. There is all of the resources that you could ever need. Also, make sure that you hit subscribe and turn on that notification bell. I will see you next week.